next few years. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, sir. Um, I'll share my screen now. And uh, I'll make a, a, a presentation uh, uh, with the help of slides. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, sir, most honored Dr. C.D. Mai, a teacher or maker, one of the most excellent and celebrated academicians and class administrator I have seen and uh, who have groomed most of us in Cotton Research Institute and uh, not only in the Cotton Research Institute but in the entire Indian Council of Agricultural Research System and SAUs, many uh, SAUs. My friend, uh, Dr. Uh, P.G. Patil, present Vice Chancellor of MPKV Rauri and uh, he's, a, uh, he's, he's an excellent scientist, director, as well as now, I'm, I'm sure that he's going to uh, steward the uh, very, very prestigious, very good university, which he himself uh, was the alma mater for him, him. My colleagues in headquarters, Dr. R. K. Singh, uh, who is ADG, uh, commercial crop, and uh, he's a class biotechnologist, as well as former uh, ADG Dr. Uh, Rajendra, and I saw somewhere uh, he is also attending, and he is also there, and he is also a partner in the building of CICR and the cotton uh, in general. My very good friend, Dr. B. S. Dubedi, uh, he is our batchmate in the ARS as well as director of NBSS and LUP. Now, one of the most eminent scientists and present director, Dr. Y. G. K. Prasad, uh, I knew him. Um, uh, as a scientist, as an entomologist uh, for last many years. And uh, uh, he's an outstanding uh, researcher. I've seen him as a director of Atari, one of the eminent scientists and present uh, um, uh, uh, scientists or directors of the, of, the, of the time now. All founder directors who are attending, all uh, HFDs, um, who are there, as well as um, who, who served the institute in the past, scientists, colleagues, administrative, uh, and other uh, academic staff, uh, researchers, students, and friends. In fact, uh, CICR, to me, is a family, and uh, it made my career. And I, I, I served CICR for long 26 years, initial from, uh, uh, in, immediately after joining uh, in the ARS. That was the first institute I joined in 1986, September, and served there till 2013. It's a long time. I'm glad CICR today is celebrating its 45th Foundation Day. Um, and uh, I wish you all a very good future, a very good health, personal, as well as a very good health of the Institute under the present leadership. Now, uh, although much has been said about the cotton scenario uh, and, and also uh, the 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 glorious past which the which has uh, our our uh, past uh, um, directors have served. There were nine regulars and eight uh, acting directors who did this glorious past of this institute through its 45 years of journey. And I have personally worked with seven out of nine uh, regular directors and six of out of nine um, the, the acting directors who were, who were equal contributors. Uh, to the institute development. Uh, cotton scenario is also a part of the challenges and concern uh, which brings forth uh, to us uh, and which can also be taken as an opportunity. Definitely that serve as an opportunity and most of it has already been said by uh, our director, uh, Dr. YGK, as well as uh, to some extent uh, by Dr. P.G. Patil. Uh, Indian cotton scenario, if you see, um, it has... Uh, uh, a long history which can be conveniently divided into three era. And uh, the highest cotton production during the varietal era was 152 lakh bales, which we, we got production. And that was uh, before 7071 or by 7071. And then the longest era was uh, with the introduction of uh, hybrids, which was developed by, by Dr. Patel in uh, 1970 71. And then there was number of hybrids have been produced in, in, in the cotton scenario and that, that lasted till today. And uh, 
so long history 2001 to 2002 till till that area we consider the hybrid uh, technology era and the highest production during that time because of the hybrid I, in fact i can say is uh, 330 lakh bales but then the revolution started during this bt era a number of other uh, very important uh, innovations came in cotton cotton has always been important in the history of not only in the country in the prehistoric time as well as in the world uh, it and, and india has always assumed or gained or uh, sh shown um, um, a strength in that area and uh, in 1980s uh, th there was a build up of uh, cotton bollworm and we started uh, decimating the the losses uh, or the, the production which was gained because of the hybrid introduction or large scale hybrid introduction and then the, there was an excellent wonder molecule which which was introduced as a synthetic pyrethroid that has again helped in the management of this uh, pest but then that there was a time when I joined in 1986, we we were hunting for it almost physically, and it had literally become uh, resistant to all arsenals, chemical arsenals, even by dipping in the bottle of uh, um, uh, a strong solution, the main solution, stock solution, uh, the larvae were alive. So a huge amount of resistance uh, was built up in this uh, bollworm complex, and then. Uh, the thanks to uh, means, uh, uh, several directors and then um, Dr. Mai came and Dr. Mai and I, I don't have any qualms in, in accepting, except Dr. Mai, I think, but for him, nobody could have brought BT cotton into the country. And then the cotton show, show, um, it, it saw another uh, big revolution from 2002 onward with the onset of 4BT hybrid, which was a a single event, uh, single gene event, MON531 event. And then then at that time, the cotton production uh, uh, reached a, a very high level and uh, maximum level to the extent of 564 it came. When then, then thereafter, from 2013, 14, and thereafter, it has started stagnating, yields, uh, yields have stagnated. Uh, but that is the, the technology which lasted for a long time, which is um, contrary to our expectations, because in country like India, where uh, we have a predominant farmers, mostly marginal farmers, mostly illiterate farmers, we do not have much respect initially uh, or understanding or awareness about refuge growing and planting. So it was, uh, but the BT cotton had a strength. It was further fortified with the two gene complex, 15985 with CRY1 AC and CRY2 AB, and that continued to give. Till today, uh, a huge amount of, and today to the extent farmers are not ready to take any variety other than BT. What to talk about taking a variety, we ourselves, when I was head of crop improvement division, I tried uh, in one of the years, um, uh, director Dr. Kranti at the time uh, decided, and we all decided that let us grow uh, desi cotton and uh, try to make it a SDPS pattern of growth. And from the from initially after entering the gate till the till A B and C block, entire thing pl was planted was uh, with the desi cotton with the hopes that we will be able to ward off this uh, pest, which which was because after a long time of cultivation of BT cotton, we found we thought the pest might have gone somewhere, but we were not knowing the enemy was hiding somewhere on the collateral crops and other crops. It suddenly came and we saw the lush green growth, but there was a uh, um, almost negligible production that year. Many of my colleagues will uh, be able to um, is, um, uh, confirm me on that. And that time we realized this enemy has not gone away. It is only the BT which is making the difference. Now, India has the largest um, area under cotton and uh, with the lowest productivity. And this is one of the challenges as well as concern, as well as opportunity which gives we, we find when there's a gap in, in the realizable yield, there's always an opportunity which we can manage, we can fill. And uh, if we see the state-wise uh, production, Maharashtra again decimate the entire average of the country with the highest area or acreage uh, under cultivation. It's, it has the lowest productivity. Again, we have to make or think something there. And, uh, the 
proper soil solution selection needs to be there dr bs duvedi is there and definitely now under his leadership we are expecting that uh, uh, there has to be a proper selection and vis a vis uh, the highly new um, I mean, high, um, nutrient loving uh, and water responsive bt cotton what should be the area we should go because maharashtra which is the largest area in the in the country with the largest rain fed area grows the highest uh, amount of uh, area under cotton so is it really right or we should think of um, a more greater diversification uh, like we are thinking in the north for rice and other crops then uh, this is the the latest um, estimate which have been found not estimate it has all, it has been collected data from based on the usda and other estimates and it shows that india ranks 33 in terms of uh, annual growth and it is a very dismal um uh, news at this time that we are growing at a, a rate of zero where all the other countries after 33 or uh, that they are all zero um of course pakistan goes in negative development but then we cannot um, is uh, um, be happy with that situation we have to do something uh long time cultivation of, of bt cultivation has really led to Uh, a qualitative uh, uh, change uh, has been uh, noted uh, from the period of independence there has been a change in production of three staple length cotton and the extra long and long staple as dr pg patel has already said uh, that this is sometime the disadvantage of speaking uh, at the end when uh, but it is a advantage also i find most of the things are covered uh, uh, from nearly long staple from nil to today we are having surplus 280 lakh bales of uh, cotton uh, which is long staple medium staple also increased from the time of independence uh, uh, from 15 lakh bales to 75 lakh bales and short staple length cotton which was already less 7.6 lakh bale during that time has now come down to 5 uh, lakh bales so this is the situation which has ha happened whereas surgical cotton uh, cotton is very uh, much required and we are heading to a place a time when we need to the the because india had the unique advantage and credit and merit of growing all the four cultivated species these are the species which originated in asia and in in india indian region so we are today uh, means not able to protect them so we need to see how we can protect in addition to these um, the this uh, there has also been um uh, gr arboreum area uh, changes uh, under each of these species which is very much evident evident gossypium arboreum area has uh, reduced from 65% area to 2% gossypium harvestium reduced from 32% to 8% gossypium hirsutum it it remarkably increased from 3% to 75% and barbadens was nil at that time almost and now also it is negligible Uh, in addition there are several constraints um, uh, which are there which many of my friends have already told uh, sudden wilt is a problem major areas under rain fed these are the constraints uh, soil has become saline mostly in north india and, and crust prone and also in in um, um, in other regions of the country weed infestation is another area as dr patil has raised the cost of cultivation is 40 times uh, uh, because of the weed infestation and and uh, management of weed Uh, inappropriate tillage and residue management is another area which we need to see and uh, non descriptive hybrids and varieties uh, so then the concerns i will come again a uh, little more uh, limitations of several uh, which i have already said high cost of cultivation marginal uh, and land and lowest productivity uh, in the world cicr now has merely has become a technology support provider for the crop based cotton based cropping system in the country this is not my saying it is also the saying and i am equally uh, 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 responsible there because i had worked 26 years in in cicr i i need to see that we it is a good unless cicr works but now uh, technology support or backstopping is not provided to bt cotton which is largely grown in 98 97% area of the country we have we need technology but then the technology is being given by 
the main technology is being given by the private company and we are telling them so but that is also very important but uh, i will tell why it is uh, we need to work in other areas thought to we are now thought to be nurturing somebody's baby we need to have our own baby and also nurture it now nurture our baby as well as with the technology support and backstopping and others baby as well uh, which are coming from private sector success of crop science division my colleague uh, dr r k singh uh, is there very much uh, there and dr rajendran is also there uh, every day during foundation day or new year day dg makes a presentation in front of uh, honorable group of ministers where the first and foremost achievement he tells is the 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 division and the and the institute or the crop under which number of varieties have been released or like uh, dr uh, r k singh will Uh, support me that one co variety of sugar cane it has uh, it has now almost um, occupied uh, more than 70% area of the country so that is the pride he takes but uh, in case of our uh, cotton research and cotton system we cannot say that because we we do not have a bt cotton of our own in case of cotton 97% area is under bt cotton cultivation which is in private hand so CICR, as I have been telling and I have seen, has has done a wonderful research for last forty-five uh, years, and uh, it has been serving the cause of cotton farmers since its inception. Public sector varieties, which are developed, which is three hundred seventy-nine, uh, uh, and uh, in number two hundred sixty-six cotton varieties, hundred thirteen uh, hirsutum, of which a sizable number has been done by CICR only, and other through AICRP system. these have been uh, ruling in the pre and predominant in the india in pre bt era but and providing all technology support i said uh, to the uh, to sustain the livelihood of the farmers uh, india is the largest producer of cotton and earns a, a, a sizable amount of foreign exchange through its export but now the time has come when we need certain disruptive technology uh, and we really have to go our worry uh while thinking of these kind of uh, disruptive technology because uh, this is must unless we think in that angle we will not be able to uh, break the yield barriers and uh, other barriers which are there and uh, uh, when dr cd mai is there with us i know uh, nothing can stop us he is our advisor he is he is our thinker and philosopher and he is beside us all the time that is a great thing so also cicr recently released 20 means at, at my time we had started initiating back crossing with the 531 uh, mon uh, uh, varieties with mon 531 event which was single event but at that time it was still good but that's not without any risk involved from that time onward i was having that in mind but that was a direction which was coming from but uh, the top but in fact i was not very much uh, uh, very much pro doing this work because i was thinking it as a defeat from our side our cicr side when there were is a where there are eminent scientists of the of working on cotton throughout the country cicr is an overarching um, uh, big brother in cotton production and we are finally taking and resigning to our fate and taking somebody else's may, may let it be a out of patent event but at that time i was not very happy but then something had to be done to make cics variety uh, functional the large scale deployment of single uh, this event which have been there or which have been practiced for last two decade have already uh, exposed the boll worms to a greater degree and uh, um, and once this single gene breaks down there will be going to be a big catastrophe further uh, because this single gene is warding off and uh, the the bollworm um, uh, the, which is the greatest enemy which is cotton bollworm or helicoverpa armigera pink bollworm is still manageable but then this when managing this particular pest which used to consume 50% about 50 lakh tons of pesticides at one time when i was there uh, uh, was is a very dreadening and very difficult situation so we should not uh, uh, means uh, depend upon this one single gene uh, construct which of that is in the public sector uh, first and foremost breeder should aim at bringing all its good varieties which are now resting on the shelf to farmers field by fortifying with public bt genes 
why not we go ahead sir uh, my sir you are there and uh, i will uh, um, um, be happy if somebody means uh, mistakes me or whatever but i will say that i would engage proactively to buy some of the proven events even the one uh, which has been recently been tainted as a banned htbt cotton which is having not only a dual cry gene but also esps cp4 eps esps ps gene uh, for inducing herbicide tolerance gene so this was gone to a later extent and i am myself i, I am I, i have conducted experiment in cicr in c block i remember the place i remember the pictures there must be there when we have given in brl2 um, uh, trial we participated and we confirmed that with this technology we can save 40% of our cost of cultivation by way of reducing the the, um, the this uh, weed management practices and weeding which is uh, costing us in the cost of cultivation so why not because at that time buyer has done brl2 also but desperately they would do thinking losing hopes on on us lo losing hopes on uh, our system telling that we are unethical we do not respect the 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 credibility of the uh, of the technology or credibility of the the accords which we make with the help of trade by by paying for the trade value and slashing it so till today we cannot think of growing anything without try one ac and try two ab so why not dr yg prasad you this is a high time you should lay hand on this technology and show it light of the day it has already gone through bio um, uh, safety analysis it has already gone through bs uh, brl2 only a, a tinge of um, confidence building has to be taken with the buyer and yesterday or day before yesterday also had a talk with them they are very happy to come out with this technology and take it further and why we can buy such kind of technology or we partner to buyer and then take this technology um, fortify our varieties and make them sell nobody cares who bt gene is there inside the, it will be selling by the name of a hybrid or a variety which who has developed that so that is the way we have to go we have to pyramid public sector events 2 gte 13 us 78 tma 12 or codom optimized cry1 ac with transpeptide leader is there transient peptide leader which will localize it to chloroplast so this is another tma 2 event which is which has come so i am again very surprised why dr uh, dr uh, ygk uh, i think you you should have the guts to take this and uh, the last time when i visited recently last month i heard that you were also telling that it delays the phenology of cotton when pgt 13 but i have talked i had a very detailed this uh, talk with uh, dr pentel and his group working with this they have also backcrossed it Uh, in in now they are in this four generation in suraj and in many of our varieties and they don't see all those things and to tell you further that all the genes which the, are are mon 531 or 15985 event which is there with two genes which which monsanto is now growing or buyer is now cultivating or we are cultivating they were initially in the coker parent there could be some lag with the or uh, means uh, genetic lag or drag Uh, can be there with the uh, coker gene because that can be eliminated with the repeated back crossing and if a, he says at the most 5 days it it flowering also occurs at the same time whole maturity may have been been uh, delayed by 5 days that is nothing uh, weighing the, the 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 advantage of this so go ahead do this 2 gt uh, us 78 i don't know what is the strength of this tma 12 nbri does not have faith probably Uh, although we have a mou signed with the uh, um, with the uh, csir institute they have uh, given to um, um, pau and i have recent uh, this uh, uh, dialogue with the uh, with honorable vice chancellor and they found an excellent resistance there but they need to go all of you should join hand to go for biosafety sa because biosafety sa needs a, a room room full of dozier for a biosafety clearance so for uh, from gac so you should just now uh, get yourself involved in it get the biosafety essay done and uh, these events are freely available from public sector and then do the biosafety of the events done in the coker variety in the you don't have to do in a variety where you are transforming it 
where where you are uh, transferring it or introducing it but they you have to do in a parent variety that bio assessment bio safety analysis and prepare may get it cleared from uh, and also another uh, in the, which i discussed with the uh, dr viva uh, uh, from bcil because she is the only person of hope uh, who is now capable not only in india but also in the world she has been engaged by, by dbt other part of the world for doing all dbt or or bio safety clearance she will do it dbt she is herself a member in dbt she says if 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 the if cicr can show or somebody can show that the protein or toxin protein produced by tg2e13 or us78 or any of these are similar to cry1 ac or cry2 ab toxin they can also get further exemption from bio safety that she can do if the nature of the protein is same so why don't you go on and you have to intensify this area but for you cicr does not see i don't see much future of this, this uh, our institute which i i uh, celebrate to say that this is my institute uh, we have to have our varieties enriched with all these um, uh, public sector even private sector bought uh, uh, from the private sectors events and becoming partner with them and uh, let us not have ego or priority problem i knew at our time we were thinking that we will be able to generate a construct but then uh, for single event you know buyer had spent at that time 2500 crores of rupees way back in 1986 when we were not even hearing that much amount of money ever so that time they that was the amount they spent for that event how much we are spending not even a crore these days so where can we land in in, a, in an effective event so we must engage with bcil and initiate bio safety studies in kokar uh, for approval and uh, then i have few slides for uh, each of the uh, three four divisions they are not the unique uh, things which i am going to tell you are already engaged in but i will be highlighting something which is which we might not be doing now at the moment and because all other things have been said well said and well done and you have been doing i as a head of crop improvement also have seen what what we have been doing so but then we have to go go for you now focus short duration erect type uh, better harvest and high got uh, cultivar this is what you are doing yourself but you have to think of some disruptive technology for development of that adoption of high density planting system with big bowl type i don't say that high density plantation system can be at all be successful it is better than leaving the cotton at its own fate at the stage where it is if you practice hdps you have to practice with the uh, biotech trait and and big bowl type big bowl type i also happen to work on this and i i did not do anything miracle i was looking for studying the inheritance of uh, of uh, of uh, resistance gene uh, bacterial blight resistance gene and i i landed up and that was and the the paper which reported that accidental new variety recorded the highest bowl size still now it was 8 8 gram and dr uh, dr kranti at that time he saw and i left when i left it was a t5 plant and the uh, seed will be t6 i don't know how the homogeneity was not uh, been able to be traced uh, traced that, that there or the breeder should have done something to protect because for last 6 years i have been seeing and this state is not a miracle it has come from akala 44 and gizie and you are a breeder all of many of you are breeders there you know the big bowl trait has come from akala 44 which i was using and i have a, a big training on plant breeding and genetics in in while my team in the usa sir you had been instrumental in sending me there for a longest term in in cicr as a postdoc before that i went by dbt for two years and then you sent me for two years and then at that time i prepared isogenic line sir um, i can boast there nobody else for for studying the inheritance there is nothing but is i am just to say that anybody can develop isogenic line of cotton having b1 to b uh, b6 gene for resistance and those are present in akala for uh, um, 101 102b or uh, s295 which has about 16 gene for resistance why not we harvest them we use akala 44 for big bowl size and these are the bowls which we need to develop and uh, introgression and pre breeding for exploiting alien genes and cicr has the biggest wild wild uh, wild species garden so some of these species which are very highly compatible with the 
uh, with the cultivated cotton and they they are uh, they can be used as a source of biotic abiotic stress tolerance uh, increased salinity problem which is increasing at the moment uh, fiber quality trait and and many other other characteristics so but i would also request that uh, cicr or any saus or any public institute should freely make available crosses between the wild cotton species which are being done at cicr and um, any other crosses which you are making to um, to other public sectors you you look for your own trait which we have been thinking and also share them so that else uh, somebody can accidentally find, find some other trait and then we, we all uh, have success enjoy the success these are the three um, uh, wild type varieties uh, wild type uh, cotton which have been exploited uh, by uh, for, uh, for resistance to white fly and and uh, cotton leaf curl was virus and jessin Uh, although i know dr vagmare has done a lot of work in in, in developing uh, a very good uh, uh, and cicr has developed definitely breeders um, uh, uh, credit goes to them they have identified a lot of sources for resistance which have been registered in P, in, in in bpgr so this is another disruptive technology now, way, way back uh, in 1999 rna interference was uh, um, was discovered and it was given a nobel prize Uh, um, for um, uh, for science there uh, at that time, and this is one of the most celebrated uh, technology, which was or tool which was used for silencing a gene for a uh, functional genomics. This was the most widely adapted or widely used technology for gene silencing. And uh, uh, before the the CRISPR Cas9 based genome editing technology has come in 2010, which also won the Nobel Prize. fortunately and incidentally sir when you sent me last time i learned this technology i i silenced 11 genes and that paper got published in plant cell and uh, when when i i tried to study the signal transduction of um, of uh, xa21 mediated resistance against bacterial bright gene where the downstream regulating uh, proteins were uh, down regulated or genes were down regulated in using rna interference now people are using double stranded rna interference concept six of which i have already developed in cicr and also deposited with uh, with nrcpb here in delhi and also given to cicr i don't know what happened to those 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 plants which uh, transformants which i had given further to dr monga and others to work further but this technology has come as a antibiotic or antibody now now they are preparing dsrnai based on like in case of chili leaf curl virus they have successfully using dsrnai concept and giving an exogenous topical application on the infected plant and the plants are getting um, um, free from the virus so this is up to 87% uh, percent, 86 to 87% percent protection have been found and cotton leaf curl virus resistant uh, uh, chili leaf curl virus resistant varieties have been developed so now cicr biotechnology should uh, work on this line and also this is a crispr cas9 gene technology editing technology which is a celebrated technology again in 2010 many of the industries have already used for useful purpose for improving the quality trait i as a pathologist and a plant protection scientist i am trying to use or knock down or silence um, certain genes which would impart resistance and uh, this is what this gene does does very precisely recently tall effectors means uh, this is tall effectors are, are the avr genes which are present in the pathogen uh, they bind to the sweet genes which are which induces sweet genes in the plant um, now the, the scientists have done recently this paper has come in nature biotechnology the sweet gene which encodes a transporter protein for sugar from cytosol to apoplast and as a result bacterial blight pathogen xanthomonas oryzae oryzae is attracted when they Uh, edited that gene and rendered it non-functional. That plant became resistant to bacterial blight. So this is the one we have the same disease, same pathogen, same pathogen share 99% similarity of its AVR gene function, which is my work, uh, which I published in in not only American phytopathology, not only in plant in my, uh, microbial plant microbe interaction, many other papers. Uh, those those genes are same in case of cotton system. and same kind of r gene in cotton which is a um, protein kinase uh, serine threonine kinase gene resistance which is there in cotton as well as in rice 
pattern uh, pattern system is also same with the same gene function so when it is effective there here also it can be done so this is a greatest um, um, uh, point which i am giving to the pathologists to develop a resistance against bacterial blight there is a, another there are several uh, strategies which have been done with the with this uh, tool uh, which is crispr cas9 now the latest one is editing a wild type plant to make it cultivable or to domesticate it so recently this is again it has come in nature biotechnology where a wild type tomato has been which which has a resistance to di different bacterial leaf spot they have been um, uh, rendered domesticated by doing editing of some yield and quality traits they are they are doing some uh, gene addition or editing by crispr cas9 mediated gene silencing in case of wild type so that you can directly grow them so this is another big hope and opportunity which is there in front of the new generation of scientists then uh, these are all the published paper i am telling dtp gene which is uh, which may be detoxification of uh, a uh, transport protein gene in sweet pepper cotton and cassava these are present they have been re recently edited by this uh, company in netherland and this paper um, uh, has recently been this is, has not yet been published also it has been uh, first report has come and it is in 2021 you can say this is there which can be used for um, our cotton leaf curl virus which has the same kind of um, uh, the core protein and other constitution i think dr vikas mandal uh, might have joined this uh, um, uh, this uh, meeting or foundation day lecture or talk and uh, he might also be supporting and if, may, if he wants to somebody wants to talk they can also con con contact he is in iri he is a very good scientist uh, doing a lot of work on begoma virus based uh, downstream regulation and their uh, their um, uh, the development of uh, recent variety so this is the latest as late as march 25 2021 this is the last paper which has come white fly have been found to hijack jack certain genes which are present in the plant on which they they feed these these white fly which have been sucking cotton for years together they have been able to uh, um, acquire certain which we call as a hijacking uh, phenolic glycosides that are toxic to otherwise toxic to insect now this hijacked plant gene which is named btpmat1 it enables high white fly to neutralize the phenolic the same glycoside which are present in the host plant so crispr cas9 mediated rna mediated silencing of this gene in case of uh, cotton in, in tomato and i i think extrapolably it can also be studied in case of uh, um uh, by finding is orthologue in case of uh, cotton uh, we can find that there is a resistance against white fly so these are the latest again 2019 and 2020 work where uh, a dual cassette containing cas9 gene of crispr cas9 and guide rnas which are completely complementary to a part of cl cuv se sequences they have been taken and it it has been found to confer resistance Uh, a novel uh, uh, mode of ap approach of resistance or engineering resistance again and this is a paper which is published in phytopathology uh, research by <coughs> in 2019 similar is the dual construct which have showed uh, with uh, in 2020 which has come which has delayed uh, pathogenesis uh, and development of virus within the cotton itself so these are the the evidences which are there um, for using this novel technology or disruptive technology what we can say emerging nematode pro problem this in our time we never realized um, when i was there uh, in cicr during my last days dr nandini narkhedkar said but then i got a full opportunity uh, when i i worked as a, for uh, um, as a, with the a project coordinator of eicrp nematode in the headquarters as adg plant protection and a part of time i also uh, miss, uh, took the charge of uh, <clears throat> had the additional charge of uh, project coordinator of nematode and i conducted that got this study conducted at the time we found the worldwide studies on the not world the nationwide or pan india studies on nematode losses in cotton which is a incipient pattern you cannot see the the symptom you cannot mimic it it can be showing as a drying of the leaf and uh, it can come up to uh, it it is coming up to the 10% level due to melodogyny species root node nematode and where 
uh, whenever a plant is infested, 20% yield loss is happening, and we have calculated that it, it amounted that cotton suffer losses due to uh, this particular nematode, which goes unnoticed to the tune of 471 crores, taking um, um, the, the support value or minimum support price. Dr. Chakravarti. Yes, sir. How much time? How much time? Because we have three more speakers. Okay. So, the, these are the, the things. Reniform nematode has become very problematic in, in drip irrigation. And again, but the, the opportunity is these two new nematicide, fluparam and fluensulfon, after fast tracking, uh, evoke, invoking this fast tracking, um, uh, this we have been able to uh, bring out. And this is another uh, technology for uh, uh, the very excellent technology called SPLAT technology, sex pheromone lure application technology that can um, save uh, farmers uh, of the pink worm to the extent of uh, 5,150 um, uh, rupees per quintal they, uh, they, of cotton they, they can save. And uh, these are the new emerging pests, which Dr. YG has already said. I will not further uh, dwell on that. Sir, this is one point which I would like to say because we, nobody has said, and it, this is the one of the most novel, and maybe this is the last. Weed management is a very uh, important uh, strategy or uh, need. And these are the broad-leaved and, and then subsequently we have certain, uh, uh, these are the grasses and sedges which are causing enormous losses. And these are the, the genes, so these are, this, most recently there is a uh, new technology which is called, which is called clear field technology. I happen to talk with the director, I happen to talk with uh, Dr. Venu Gopal. Uh, so if we can alter this, this gene called acetolactate synthase gene uh, by making a single gene mutation or single nucleotide mutation by CRISPR-Cas9, the, the plant no more binds to uh, this group of herbicide. So similarly, BXNL gene, if we can make some, some, some mutation, single gene mutation, either mutation through mutagenic um, um, agents like uh, X-rays or, or whatever, uh, beta rays or gamma rays radiation or or mutation breeding or other uh, through um, CRISPR Cas9 mediated mediating if we can we can disrupt these genes the 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 plants can be saved whereas the weeds will be killed so this gene needs to be studied this this phenomena needs to be studied by agronomists and this needs to be deployed and this is the last slide uh, because I don't want to dwell much on that but uh, as I said that cotton uh, area or the soil for cotton needs to be seen a very, and Dr. B.S. Dwedi, uh, a very outstanding study uh, scientist who is uh, in the form of Dr. B.S. Dwedi is a director. He will understand more and uh, direct further and you have to have a coordination with them. Suitability of soils for Bt cotton can be determined by simply by measuring hydraulic conductivity of soil. This is a paper which has come long time, Soil Use and Management by Kadu et al., and this shows that an optimum yield of cotton in vertical can be obtained when soils are non-sodic and, uh, uh, and hydraulic conductivity is above 20, above, uh, above um, uh, 20 or equivalent to less than equal to, uh, greater than equal to 20 uh, millimeter per hour scale, uh, per hour. So this, this is there. If that you can measure which soil is, whether the soil is suitable for cotton or not. And these are the few uh, ideas I had. Uh, I had several other ideas, but then um, since it is a shortage of time, um, thank you for providing me this opportunity, sir. And thank you all my scientists, all, all my colleagues. It was nice and uh, very um, uh, nostalgic to see all of them together. And I think this is the highly attended and uh, most widely attended Foundation Day, which is the 45th Foundation Day I have ever seen uh, in CICR, in the history of CICR. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Chakravarti. I think it was one of the most exhaustive lectures and also wonderful suggestions that he has given for practically every section. And uh, I am sure that uh, Dr. Chakravarti will.